In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O come, let us worship God, and bow low before the God who made us, for he is the Lord, our God. Brothers and sisters in Christ, welcome. Father Chris here celebrating Mass for the fifth Sunday of Ordinary Time. And before we go too much further, for those of you at home, please send me your guardian angels. We will load them up with multiple blessings, and by we I mean the Trinity. Uh, guardian angel at my side, go to the church for me, kneel in my place at Holy Mass, where I desire to be. At offertory in my stead, take all I am and own, and place it as a sacrifice upon the altar throne. At holy consecration's bell, adore with seraph's love, my Jesus hidden in the host come down from heaven above. When the priest communion takes to bring my Lord to me, that his sweet heart may rest on mine, and I his temple be. Brothers and sisters in Christ, again, welcome. Let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and my words, and what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy in us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care. That relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Job. Job spoke, saying, Is not man's life on earth a drudgery? Are his days not those of a hireling? He is a slave who longs for the shade, a hireling who waits for his wages. So I have been assigned months of misery, and troubled nights have been allotted to me. If in my bed I say, When shall I arise? Then the night drags on. I am filled with restlessness until dawn. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle. They come to an end without hope. Remember that my life is like the wind. I shall not see happiness again. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Response oil song. Praise the Lord who heals the brokenhearted. Praise, Praise the, Lord the Lord who heals the brokenhearted. Praise the Lord for he is good. Sing praise to our God for he is gracious. It is fitting to praise him. The Lord rebuilds Jerusalem. The dispersed of Israel he gathers. Praise, Praise the, Lord, the Lord who heals, who heals the brokenhearted. The broken he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He tells them the number of the stars. He calls each by name. Praise, Praise the Lord who heals, heals the brokenhearted. Broken Great is our Lord and mighty in power. To him is wisdom that there is no limit. The Lord sustains the lowly. The wicked he casts to the ground. Praise, Praise the, the Lord, who heals the broken heart. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if I preach the gospel, there is no reason for me to boast, for it is an obligation that has been imposed upon me. And woe to me if I do not preach it. If I do so willingly, I have a recompense. But if unwilling, then I have been entrusted with a stewardship. What then is my recompense? 
that when I preach, I offer the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. Although I am free in regard to all, I have made myself a slave to all, to win over as many as possible. To the weak, I have become weak, to win over the weak. I have become all things to all, to save at least some. All this I do for the sake of the gospel, that I too may have a share in it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Christ took away our infirmities and bore our diseases. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be heard and let's proclaim this gospel word in all name of Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Lord. On leaving the synagogue, Jesus entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Simon's mother-in-law lay sick with a fever. They immediately told him about her. He approached, grasped her hand, and helped her up. Then the fever left her, and she waited on them. When it was evening after sunset, they brought to him all who were ill or possessed by demons. The whole town was gathered at the door. He cured many who were sick with various diseases, and he drove out many demons, not permitting them to speak because they knew him. Rising very early before dawn, he left and went off to a de deserted place where he prayed. Simon and those who were with him pursued him, and on finding him said, Everyone is looking for you. He told them, Let us go on to the nearby villages, that I may preach there also. For this purpose I have come. So he went into their synagogues, preaching and driving out demons throughout the whole of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Today's Gospel reading is a little different from some other Gospel readings. Now, it all takes place in the town of Capernaum, but that's not the different part. First off, Peter cures, I mean, Jesus cures Peter's uh, mother, sick mother-in-law. Then Jesus starts to work to heal the local townspeople and drive out demons. And then finally, Jesus says, let's go elsewhere and do more of this. And at first glance, these three stories being told today seem a little separate and unrelated. But my brothers and sisters, nothing could be further from the truth. Let's start with Peter, or Simon, as he is still known in the early stage of Jesus' ministry. His mother-in-law was, we were told, sick with a fever. Now we can relate, yeah? I mean, we've all experienced a bad cold or something that just completely knocks us off of our feet. Might even have been COVID. And let's face it, when you are sick like that, you really don't want to do anything. So Jesus takes her hand, helps her up, and poof, the fever's gone. Now, we might think, well, that's pretty cool. I mean, it's not driving out a demon cool or raising someone from the dead kind of cool, but it's still pretty cool. But in this portion of the story, when we focus on what Jesus did, we lose sight of the bigger picture. We need to focus on what Peter's mother-in-law did. More on that in a moment. Now let's look at the next paragraph. It's evening. Time to start wrapping things up, right? Especially in a time where there was no such thing as electric lighting to keep the night going for a while. So when the sun went down, it was pretty much time to call it a day. 
But what does Jesus do here? He's still running the local free clinic with exorcisms on the side. Our gospel tells us the whole town was gathered at the door. He cured many who were sick with various diseases, and he drove out many demons. Jesus kept it going. Now, granted, many of the, the townspeople waited until sunset so as not to have Jesus do work on the Sabbath. Remember, the first line of the gospel is that Jesus was, quote, leaving the synagogue. So we know it was the Sabbath. Now, Jesus wasn't bound by any Sabbath restraints, so he could have really healed them any time. But he showed respect for the laws in place for man to show them how they should act. Now the third story. The disciples are bursting with excitement. The town people are celebrating. They're having a feast. They go to look for him, and they find Jesus praying alone in a deserted place. The disciples tell him, they're going, to, they're going to have a party for us. Everyone's been looking for you. But Jesus instead says, let us go on to the nearby villages that I may preach there also. And he leaves his accomplishments, which were many that day, behind him. Do you see the connection between these three stories yet? Each part is about one thing and one thing alone, service. Once healed, Peter's mother-in-law didn't just stay in bed thinking, eh, maybe I'll just chill a bit and take the rest of the evening off, you know, to get totally back to normal. No, we are told that she immediately waited upon Jesus and his disciples. And when it became after dark and it was time to wrap things up, Jesus persisted and he gave the people what they truly needed. When he finished in Capernaum, Jesus wanted to move on and do even more, surprising his disciples who wanted to sit back and enjoy their successes. For Jesus, the mission was so much more important than the glory. For this purpose, I have come. Now, it was Jesus' works of healing and his willingness to serve that drew people of every kind to him. And this is our mission, too. We may not be able to heal the sick or drive out demons or even get rid of a fever without taking Tylenol. But we can comfort, listen, empathize, using the love that we have inside of each of us right now, the love that comes straight from God. That has healing powers we can't even imagine. When we are strengthened and healed by Christ, just as Simon's mother-in-law was, we need to take that energy he gives us and use it to serve others, just as he himself did. Remember, Christ came not to be served, but to serve. Like Jesus, we must serve others and respect their ways, whether convenient or not. And we must keep focus on the mission, the mission of service. We cannot get ourselves wrapped up in a cocoon of our accomplishments and forget the very mission that, G that brought such success to us, our service to others. And finally, we must remember, as Jesus did, to serve the one true God above us all by offering our regular daily prayers to him. And it is in that prayer that we find continued peace, strength, and love to remain faithful to Christ's true mission. And it is in the holy sacrifice of the Mass with its celebration of the Eucharist that our prayer ultimately reaches its highest and most perfect form. And so, what better thing is there to do than to learn and understand more about the Mass itself? 
So this next part of the homily does continue our monthly review of the different parts of Holy Mass. We started this series on the Feast of the Baptism of the Lord last month, and this is in response to Archbishop Amon's declaration for the Archdiocese of New Orleans that 2021 is to be celebrated as our Year of the Eucharist. It's our local church's way to remind us of Christ's great gift that is the Eucharist, especially in these COVID-saturated times. And last year, when we all went for weeks being unable to partake of his most precious body and blood. Today, we look at the church gathered in the presence of God. And we take a closer look at the entrance procession, the reverencing of the altar, and the sign of the cross. So don't worry, this part today will literally just be the beginning of the beginning. And we'll get to the other parts of Mass in other months. So let's get started with the entrance procession itself. What is it? And why does the church include it in the sacred liturgy? Well, realize that many different faiths use processions, and Catholics are certainly no different. For instance, in the Old Testament, we read about processions with the Ark of the Covenant. Well, let's hope at least that you remember that first Indiana Jones movie. But as soon, as, soon after Constantine legalized Christianity in the Roman Empire, around about the 4th century, the earliest church services would include the Pope gathering with his flock and processing to different churches, called stational churches, singing litanies and re reciting the Kyrie eleison around, along the way. It was kind of a penitential procession. It was used as a way to prepare the hearts of those who would participate in the Mass. And there are similar processions like that used in Rome to this day. Now, over the centuries, the processions got shorter and eventually were confined from the, for, to, to go from the sacristy, where the minister is vested, direct to the altar. And the meaning changed slightly also, to remind the congregation of our procession or our pilgrimage to heaven. Ever notice that every sanctuary in a church is elevated up on a few steps, that's no accident. It is too is meant to remind us of our hopeful ascension to heaven, but it is also to represent Jesus's ascent to Mount Calvary, to offer the sacrifice of himself, the very sacrifice that we recreate every mass with the Eucharist. The procession is led by the crucifix, usually carried by one of our altar servers, representing Christ's sacrifice for us. It's much like how a medieval army would rally behind their king's banner, except our king is Christ. Two other servers would then follow with candles to symbolically light our, our path along our journey's way to heaven. The other servers then follow. Generally, next comes the lector, who may carry the book of the Gospels if no deacon is present. Then the deacon follows, traditionally carrying that book of the Gospels. Finally, the priest enters last, and if a second deacon is present, he walks to the priest at his immediate right. In special masses, especially at the Christmas vigil, Easter vigil, and masses with the archbishop, incense might be used in the procession, as well as in mass itself. Other more rarely used processional items include canopies, professional banners, the paschal candle, each having their own significance. The ministers process to the altar and turn behind it and kiss the altar, or what is properly called reverencing the altar. Usually this is only done by the clergy, the deacon or deacons, and the priest, as well as any concelebrating priests, if any. This is done for a few reasons. One, the altar represents Christ and his sacrifice as the Lamb of God atop the altar of the cross. When the congregation sees the priest reverence the altar, we are to reverence the Lord in our own hearts. Secondly, the altar also reminds us of the sacrifices 
of our many saints and martyrs, many of whom sacrificed their very lives to Christ. And so we recognize that at the altar, we are both with Christ and with all of his saints. Now, you may not be aware, but every altar that is consecrated has a relic of a saint or martyr placed within it. And that's to remind us of their personal self-offering and now their union with Jesus. The priest then starts with a prayer. Yes, the sign of the cross is indeed itself a prayer, not just an introduction to yet another prayer. In that brief and powerful prayer are the two greatest mysteries of our Christian faith, our belief and faith in the Holy Trinity and our belief and faith in the Paschal mystery of Jesus' sacrificial death on the cross. It's amazing to think about how much is contained in this deceptively simple and short prayer. As we begin Mass, we ultimately leave our own world behind and we move forward towards what we hope is our ultimate destination, eternal life with Christ in heaven. The presiding priest himself acts as en persona Christi, or acts in the person of Christ during Mass. So let's think about this a moment. Essentially, every time we go to Mass, we rise from our everyday lives to join Jesus in his heavenly kingdom and witness his sacrifice on the cross for us. This is not a Mardi Gras parade or a, a you know, some, some, something we watch down Main Street on, in Disney World. Does it not make sense for us to come into this incredible spectacle fully prepared? Shouldn't we be physically respectfully dressed and on time, mentally ready to accept our Lord's wisdom in the words spiritually prepared to offer praise and worship to him. Now, we might say, well, God really doesn't care what I wear or if I'm ready. He cares a lot more that I'm actually here. And you know what? You are absolutely right. God doesn't care about those things. But we should. There is absolutely nothing you can do, nothing you can make, nothing you can sacrifice to pay back God for all he has given to each and every one of us. Nothing. But that does not mean that we should actually do nothing. Please, find the beauty and the warmth and the love that is the holy sacrifice of the Mass. Let it seep into you and change you fundamentally. Our focus must always be on service and on prayer, just as Christ himself taught us and demonstrated for us. And just as the formal liturgy of our church reinforces within us. Brothers and sisters, let us now lift up, let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate for the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified on Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, 
in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us now lift up our intentions to our Lord. For the gift of the church and her sacramental life, especially for the gift of the Eucharist, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. For the gift of peace in our nation and in our world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the intention of Pope Francis in February, that women who are victims of violence may be protected by society and have their sufferings considered and heeded, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For the gift of our families, that they may give witness to life and love in our world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. For the gift of employment and the ability to earn a living wage that we might provide for ourselves and share with others in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For the gift of our education and the ability to teach others to follow in the way of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. That those who have gone on before us be with God forever, especially Ronald Hale, Jean Marsh, and Guy LeBlanc, and for the intention for whom this Mass is being offered. Jack and Rosalie Couch, Loretta Irwin, Dennis Vega, Joan Ferry, John Bach, Julio Amu, Gracia Amu, Amy Marus, James Manoir, Ian Ma Michael Racine, Harold and Hazel Howat, uh, Walter Howat, D. Broussard, and John and Claire McDermott. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. And for those intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you for hearing all these our intentions. We ask you to constantly help us in the way that we are to serve, the way that we are to love, Lord, for truly service is love. And we ask you to help us keep loving the people in our lives uh, because you, first and foremost, loved us. And we thank you for all of this in your name, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Together, let us pray our family prayer. Loving, Loving and faithful, and faithful God, God, through the years the people of our archdiocese have appreciated the prayers and love of Our Lady of Prompt Succor in times of war, disaster, epidemic, and illness. We come to you, Father, with Mary, our mother, and ask you to help us in the battle of today against violence, murder, and racism. We implore you to give us your wisdom that we may build a community founded on the values of Jesus, which gives respect to the life and dignity of all people. Bless parents that may form their children in faith, Bless and protect our youth, that they may be peacemakers of our time. Give consolation to those who have lost loved ones through violence. Hear our prayer and give us the perseverance to be a voice for life and human dignity in our community. We ask this through Christ our Lord, our Lady of Pomsucker, hasten to help us. Mother Henri de Lille, pray for us that we may be a holy family.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands and will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. The praise of the Lord in his name. For our good and good of all souls of the church. O Lord our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant we pray that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness sinners ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from, from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing to him of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather your people to yourself, so from the rise of a sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For in the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and, and profess your resurrection until you come again. again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing this sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Mary Magdalene, and with all the saints, and whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. Your servant Francis, our Pope, and Gregory, our Bishop, 
the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with peace. your spirit. Let's offer each other the sign of Christ. Peace. 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 Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Pray us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For those of you at home, please join me in an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you, and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen, indeed. Let us pray. O God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.
Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Saint Michael, Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be, be our protection, protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince, the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits brought from the world, seeking the world's souls. Amen. I uh, want to really, uh, thank uh, Deacon Jim for being here, certainly uh, just to be with the Mass for us, and also for certainly for me for his homily, uh, which is really good. So thank you, Deacon Jim. I appreciate you and your time and talent and energy and treasure and your being a part of this parish. So God bless you. I appreciate it. Thank you. God bless you guys. Have a great day, a great weekend. I enjoy. Be careful, but always turn the life over to Jesus Christ and everything. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys.